Good morning to you from my car, keeping out of the rain this morning. I'd like to share a whole book with you. Now you probably will think is, be thinking to yourself, oh dear, I'm going to spend a couple of hours on this. No, 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 not at all. Um, it's probably one of the shortest books in the New Testament. And um, we're going to be looking at the book of Jude. And there's one particular word that I want to share with you this morning. And um, it's the word contend. And it comes in verse 3 of the book of Jude. So let's just go through it together, shall we? Jude, a servant of Jesus Christ and a brother of James. To those who have been called, that's us, who are loved by God the Father and kept by Jesus Christ. That's a good start, isn't it? Loved by the Father, kept by Jesus. Mercy, peace and love be yours in abundance. Dear friends, although I was very eager to write to you about the salvation we share, I felt I had to write and urge you to contend for the faith that was once for all entrusted to the saints. Now, I like the KGV on this one. I didn't have the KGV with me this morning. and. Um, I'd like to add in that word the KGV puts, and that is earnestly. Earnestly contend for the faith that was entrusted to the saints. If we look up the word contend, we've got several meanings. We can think about it as competing in a race. Of course, always competing to win. Struggling. Struggling against the enemy. Reminds me of an old film called Once... I think it was called On the Waterfront, by, um, and it had Marlon Brando starring in it. I think it was Marlon Brando and Rod Steiger. Those of you who are my generation might remember that film. I think it was back in the 1950s. And there's a scene in that film where Marlon Brando turns to Rod Steiger and he says, I could have been a contender. I could have been a contender. In other words, he, he didn't really get into the race in the first place. But if he had, he might have won. It's different for us as Christians because we, we're in the race. We've been placed in that race if our hearts have been given to Jesus Christ and we belong to his and we're being kept by him as it says in that first couple of verses. So, the meaning of contend. There's another one here that says to strive in opposition against. We fight not flesh and blood, do we? But we fight the principalities and powers thrones and dominions in the dark places of the heavenlies. Every day we must fight for the light. That's the phrase that came to me this morning, actually, before I started looking at this. Fight for the light. Anyway, Jude goes on. For certain men whose condemnation was written about long ago have secretly slipped in among you. There'll be those that get in to the crevices that sneak in by the back door of our Christian faith and they don't have good intentions. It says these are godless men who change the grace of our God into a license for immorality and deny Jesus Christ our only sovereign and Lord. Jude says, though you already know all this, I want to remind you that the Lord delivered his people out of Egypt but later destroyed those who did not believe. That's actually quite scary, really, in a way, because he delivered every Israelite out of Egypt. Not one of them was left behind. And yet there were some, in the end, who turned to worshipping idols. They turned away from the faith. They stopped contending. They stopped struggling. They stopped trying to win. And they turned to something else an alternative which they thought would make them a winner. But they were turning away from the truth. So in effect, they were saved. Some of them were saved to be destroyed. And that really is quite a scary thought for me. In verse 6, it talks here even about the angels. And the angels who did not keep their positions of authority, but abandoned their own home. These he kept in darkness, bound with everlasting change, 
chains for judgment on the great day. No one is immune from judgment, least of all the angels of God that existed before man. In a similar way, Sodom and Gomorrah and the surrounding towns gave themselves up to sexual immorality and perversion. What did they do? They gave themselves up. They weren't forced into it. They gave themselves up by their own volition, by their own free will, and by their own choice. They stopped contending for the truth. They gave themselves up. They serve as an example of those who suffer the punishment of eternal fire. Jude goes on, in the very same way these dreamers pollute their own bodies, reject authority and slander celestial beings. There's absolutely no shame in somebody that turns away from God. They couldn't care less what they say, what they think or what they feel. But even the archangel Michael, Jude goes on, when he was disputing with the devil about the body of Moses, did not bring a slanderous accusation against him, but said, The Lord rebuke you. There's a right way of dealing with Satan, and there's a wrong way. Sometimes we might want to kick up against it. Satan, I bind you in Jesus' name. I bind you, I bind you, I bind you. But at the same time, have we really considered the walk that we have with the Lord before we actually start doing that kind of warfare? Yes, Jesus said, I, all authority is given to me in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples. But to take on the authority of Jesus, to really contend for the faith, that means we need to look at what our lives are like. How are we really doing in the faith? Are we examining ourselves? Are we being, are we being contenders in the right way? Or are we deceiving ourselves? Verse 10 goes on, Yet these men speak abundantly against whatever they do not understand. It's easy to do that, isn't it? Speak against what you don't understand. And what things they do understand by instinct, like unreasoning animals, these are the very things that destroy them. Woe to them! They have taken the way of Cain. They have rushed for profit into Balaam's error. Remember yesterday we spoke about Balaam and his error. How God met him on the road and contended with him. And he realised that he was dealing with a living God. Watch out for men that get in amongst you. That don't have the right motives. That draw you away from contending with the faith. Verse 12 says, These men are blemishes at your love feasts, eating with you without the slightest qualm, shepherds who feed only themselves. They are clouds without rain, blown along by the wind, autumn trees without fruit and uprooted, twice dead. They are wild waves of the sea, foaming up their shame, wandering stars for whom blackest darkness has been reserved forever. Remember I said just earlier on, fight for the light. Because if we don't fight for the light, we could end up in blackest darkness. And blackest darkness is nowhere to be. Where you can't use your eyes, where the Lord can't come in and show you the truth, so that your whole being is illumined. It says here these people are twice dead. Twice dead. It's like a prophecy, isn't it, for the second death. Our bodies die, but we don't want a dead spirit. We don't want to be dying a second time. We're born again of the Lord. We're born again of the Holy Spirit. And that's our second birth. And that's what we need to be contending for all the time. Jude goes on and speaks about Enoch. Enoch, the seventh from Adam, prophesied about these men. He said, See, the Lord is coming with thousands upon thousands of his holy ones to judge everyone and to convict all the ungodly of all the ungodly acts they have done in the ungodly way and of all the harsh words ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These men are grumblers and fault finders. They follow their own evil desires and they boast about themselves and flatter others for their own advantage. 
We need to have that discernment again. I spoke about this before. We can't contend without discernment. We need to be able to have every piece of armour on and have the sword of the Spirit in our hand. Not just that we're defending ourselves with the shield of faith, but that we're using the sword of the Spirit and the power of God will work through us. Now in the end of this book, Jude gives us a, a call to persevere. That says here in the NIV. But dear friends, there's always a but. I like the but because it always means that we're going to change tack and talk about something else, something fresh. But dear friends, remember what the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ foretold. These were the men who were held in high esteem at that time. Remember, some of them were still alive. When these words were written, some of them were, were gone. As we know, it was the Apostle John that was the last one to be left, who wrote the book of Revelation, which of course follows in our canon on from Jude. So we're being prepared in a sense for the great revelation by Jude. As he says in verse 18, they said to you, these apostles, in the last times, there will be scoffers who will follow their own ungodly desires. These are the men who divide you, who follow mere natural instincts and do not have the Spirit. We need to discern those that don't have the Holy Spirit. That's what Jude is telling us here. But you, there's another but, but you, dear friends, build yourselves up in your most holy faith and pray in the Holy Spirit. Keep yourselves in God's love as you wait for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ to bring you to eternal life. Jesus Christ will keep us, as Jude says at the beginning of the book, but he also says, keep yourselves. So as we keep ourselves, Jesus keeps us. Be merciful to those who doubt. Snatch others from the fire and save them. See, there's work that we have to do in helping our brothers and sisters in the truth. Be merciful to those who doubt and snatch others from the fire. Snatch them, pull them back, fight for them, contend for them, and save them. To others, show mercy, mixed with fear. Why is it mixed with fear? Because we realize that we too could fall. We too could be pulled away if we're not careful hating even the clothing stained by the corrupt flesh. That's a prayer that I would pray today for myself. O oh Lord, help me to hate sin more than ever. Because as we hate sin, God strengthens us in our spirit to love holiness and to love him. I love the end. I don't know if I've actually sung this before on, on camera, but I think it sounds... I always remember this, perhaps, I think, in my days in the Methodist Church and also, I think, in the Anglican Church at times, they sing this. And it's beautiful. And it ends Jude. And it's a prayer. We call it the doxology. Now unto him who is able to keep, able to keep you from falling, and present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God our Saviour be glory and majesty dominion and power both now and forever Ah. Amen. Enjoy your day.